Hello everyone, Lisa Turner from Psychademy here, leaders in spiritual evolution, personal transformation, and supporting abundant spiritual leaders. So we may have a possible rant coming today, for which I do not apologize. So I've been watching a little conversation going and maybe dabbling into it, and um, in fact, several conversations at once today. And really, so the question is, are you really a spiritual person? Really? So some of these conversations are amongst people who claim to be highly spiritual. Now, you're probably going to notice paradox in what I'm about to say, and that's fine too. Do you like my, pen my pendant? I haven't worn it for ages. Apparently, it's got five crystals in it. That's really amazing. It's really, really energetic. I have to be careful when I wear it, I think, because it's... Uh, yeah, it resonates with whatever I'm, I'm go is going on for me. So it's got like a little amplifier there. All right. So notice it doesn't create anything. just amplifies what is already me. Whew. Okay, so how do you know if you're spiritual? Well, one of the things I think that really makes a spiritual person, and there's a whole bunch of quality, like what I think of as qualities of a highly evolved being. And one of them is how you cause another to feel about themselves. Ooh. Now, one of the things, so I had an amazing conversation with my photographer this morning, who I am a little bit in love with because she has taken some gorgeous pictures of me. I mean, I am gorgeous and she has brought that out. <laughs> and I have to say, although I am gorgeous, I'm not very, photo I don't necessarily think I'm very photogenic and she has uh, proved me wrong there. So um, having this conversation and she was saying that there was something I'd done in a conversation, like I thought we were just having tea together. Like we met at an event. I thought we were just having, a, you know, making a cup of tea together. And she said there was that there was something I did that he tra transformed something that had been within her for generations. That this thing had been healed, and I thought we were just having a cup of tea. Now, I'm not saying this to be really egotistical. How amazing am I? I'm saying this to say this is what she reflected back to me. And to me, like that's kind of my intention. I come into interactions even, you know, my lives to, I, my intention is to enable and facilitate the other person to feel good, to feel happy, to feel love for themselves. And one of the things, and, and sometimes that might mean we need to dig a little bit and niggle and poke and like that's part of the coaching process, which we're not really doing here, but part of a coaching process is to niggle and poke until we find the pain and then we release it because we have this amazing spiritual technology which actually releases emotional pain. Hey, Russ, nice to see you. So, so one of the things I have been observing this morning about these spiritual, like several different spiritual conversations, some on like several on Facebook and several in groups. And hi, Farah, good to see you. Good to see you. So, uh, in these conversations, um, I've noticed. Okay, I'm just going to call it what it looks like judgment. So one of the conversations was about money and it was about a particular coach who was saying 5,000 pounds, normal price is more than that to do this incredible deep clearing work, like totally life transforming. And the posts are like 5,000, who'd pay that? They must be nuts. Oh, that she must be very wealthy. She must be loaded and judgment, 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 crazy, stupid. Who'd be crazy enough to pay stupid money? And I have to say, I got, because I know this person, I got a little bit defensive for the person like the people involved in this post because I'm like a Rottweiler with people I love I make no apology for that but if I sense that someone that I love is kind of not being loved and supported and whatever I will jump in and go hang on and I what, hang on just I just I just I make a point can I just, just can I ask and you know like not maybe like a Rottweiler more like a questioning Rottweiler before I attack <laughs> But I've noticed all this judgment. So the first thing is, how do you know if you're really spiritual? It's how you make others feel. And if you are in judgment of them, by definition, you're not in conditional love, in unconditional love. You're in conditional love. Like, I will love you, provided you stop doing this thing that I think is a bad thing. And this is what I see spiritual people doing a lot. They say this. They, they you know, they, they'll say things like, you know, I mean, particularly the whole money thing, right? So, you know, I've got really like, I think money is great. And I think it was much better for the universe, for the planet, if spiritual awakened people have the money rather than unawakened people, right? 
Like, it just makes sense to me. If you have all the unawakened people with the money and spiritual people giving them, giving each other a hard time, that's what this was about. This conversation was about one spiritual person giving another spiritual person a hard time about what they charge, and then the spiritual people who are buying the service a hard time about what they spent. And so the metaphor I used was this. It's like, well, you know, you can buy a Jaguar or Mercedes, or you can go and buy a, is it a Dasha, Dacha? I don't know. I, I looked at what's the cheapest car you can buy. It used to be a Deu, I know, because um, I used to work with, <laughs> I used to work in the car industry. And uh, yeah, I used to, we had one on a test rig, actually. I broke it. Whoops. I've broken a lot of cars uh, in my testing days. So, so, you know, you can either buy a Fiat or you can buy a Mercedes, right? And we don't say, God damn you, Mercedes, stop selling those expensive cars. God damn you, how dare you? Don't you know working people can't afford Mercedes? You should just stop selling them. Oh, you should sell them cheap. Sell a Mercedes cheap. All right, I told you there was a rant coming. I apologize. I don't apologize. I do not apologize for the rant, right? Because that's what you're saying. When you say this person who's offering this amazing VIP, one-on-one, -on -one, tailored package that they shouldn't. Like, who the are they? Who the bloody hell is anyone to tell anyone else what they should or shouldn't charge? And anyone else what they should and shouldn't pay for what they want it's like i don't say god damn you people buying mercedes how dare you stop buying those mercedes right it's like some i, I probably wouldn't buy a mercedes maybe i would maybe i wouldn't i don't know i got a i got i got a oh, i can't remember the name of my car is i call it a bingo it's a berlingo it's a van a little sitchin van it's great fits all my stuff in it when i go and run events right used to have a really ancient land rover gave that up when it kept breaking down but I don't make it, so I don't make any judgments about, you know, like everyone should buy a Citroen Berlingo because that, that's what I run. That's what I drive. Everyone, that's, what, that's the car that the spiritual people have, right? And it's got to be silver gray like mine, right? It's like, what the bloody hell is this bullshit? This judgment about, you know, what somebody else should or shouldn't spend and what someone else shouldn't, should or shouldn't charge. Now, as I commented on this post, I said, well, you know, I, I don't know how this person specifically runs their business, but here's what I do in mine. Like, I have my VIP package, and hi, Caroline, I am very well. I'm having a little rant here, so join the, join the fun. It's a good rant, though. It's a good loving rant. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I have my VIP packages, which are, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, and I only work with one to two clients in, in a year, right? Because this is not my business. By the way, I am not a one-on-one -on -one coach. So my business is I run a spiritual development school, Psychademy. We teach people to be professional spiritual practitioners. So it's not really my business model to run one-on-one. -on -one. So I don't particularly, like that's, like that's not my preferred way of, um, yeah, it's just not my, it's not my business model, right? My business model is to train other people to be spiritual practitioners because I can help way more people. Now, I'm very selective. I will very selectively take the odd person. And... If you want to work with me one on one, it's forty four thousand pounds plus VAT. So that works out to be fifty two thousand eight hundred. And you might be going, "How dare you?" And just notice, notice how you respond as I say that fifty two thousand pounds eight hundred. I'm just looking at thinking at it because I've got to put the VAT on. <laughs> All right, so forty four thousand plus VAT. Right. And notice how you feel. Are you saying, yay, a spiritual person in their money power, or are you saying and thinking, "How dare you?" Or are you saying, "She must be loaded." Or like, what do you say? I mean, you know, I'm not going to justify it. Like, here's the thing. I The only thing I will say is I know what I do works. I absolutely know it works. It works every time. If the client follows the process, and I'd rather work with someone who's invested at a high level, who's going to follow the instructions, than, you know, 20,000 people at a low level. So that's my VIP one-on-one, -on -one, which I don't, I, I never even offer that. Like, you've, that's invitation only right? If you, there's nowhere on my site where you can, people say, well, it doesn't say that on your website. You don't say it's not 52,800 on your website. It's like, it's not on my website. Cause I'm not, that's not, I'm not out there selling it. I'm out there offering other stuff. So I have lots of bunch of lower level programs. So like one of my lowest level programs is like seven quid, right? Now is anyone going, how dare you? They go, oh yeah, that's great. That's fine. Seven quid. You know, what is less than a packet of cigarettes? Yeah. Which, um, you know, <laughs> I don't have no judgment about if you want to smoke, smoke, I don't care. No, I don't care. It's a lot of tax on cigarettes. That means um, tax man gets a lot of money. That pays for a lot of babies, incubators, and nurses' salaries. Woohoo! And teachers. Woohoo! Yeah. So, 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 so. What's the point? So the point is about judgment, and this is also the point. When we say something negative or potentially judgmental about someone else, what we're really doing is judging ourselves. 
So when you say, even whether you're judging yourself in the now or you're judging yourself in the future or in a non-existent future. So when you say, Lord, she must be, oh, you know, look at that loaded person. She must be loaded. And the, the energy is it's bad to be loaded or how dare she or whatever. If there's negative judgment in that, your unconscious mind will go, well, I will protect you from ever having that judgment. I will keep you very, very poor. I will keep you very, very poor because that's how my unconscious mind sometimes talks to me. Sometimes it goes, Lisa, don't be a bloody idiot. Don't do that. Just step back from the edge. <laughs> so I was walking too close to the cliff yesterday, no, Sunday, because it was just so pretty and I had the sun in my eyes. So, yeah, so your unconscious mind will say to you, it will, it will protect you and will say to you, you know, oh, don't worry, I will make sure no one ever judges you and says horrible things about you like that. I'll make sure you stay poor. So if you want to be rich, speak kindly about the rich. If you want to be spiritual, speak kindly about the truly spiritual and move into this place of unconditional love. The only thing I have no, like the only thing I judge is judgment. <laughs> and yes, there's a paradox. And I don't even judge it in the sense of good or bad. I judge it as it works or it doesn't work. So one of the spiritual truths I work with, oh, there's Didi. Um, one of the spiritual truths I work with is, does it work? And if it works, like effectiveness is the measure of truth. So if, if judging other people who are wealthy would get you wealth, I'd say do it, but I know it doesn't work. If loving other people who are wealthy, admiring them, Friggin' celebrating their success. Good for you. Go, girl. Well done. I wish more spiritual people would actually charge what they're worth. I'm so glad you're doing it. I'm so proud of you because I know what it's like in this environment where there's a, you know, other people would might judge you. And I'm thinking it's so great that you're willing to stand up for that. Go you. Go you. Like, wouldn't it be great if we did that? So here's my homework for you. Ha <laughs> ha. You didn't know there was homework at this live, did you? Think of somebody that you know who you previously didn't celebrate the success for. And I want you to really, or somebody that you know that you might not have celebrated their success. So look at somebody who you know is wealthy and aiming to do well with it, do good work with their money. And just think, oh, well done you. Enjoy your wealth. You deserve it. Because what you're saying to yourself is, well done me. I'm, I'm enjoying my wealth. I deserve it. And then you'll get more. When you love other people being wealthy, you will get more wealth. So, hey, Amanda. So, any questions about that? Anyone got any questions about anything I've said? And if you're watching on the replay, that's cool too. And if not, you can, I'm here now. I got a tickle in my throat. Coughing fit, live on air. That's cool. That's what happens when I get a rant on. Okay, no questions. So I will say lots and lots of love to you. I will speak to you later, maybe next week, maybe some other time. Love you lots. Bye for now.